Oh my god, your poor dad. Ready? Welcome back to Your Poor Dad. You can't choose your sisters, but you can choose your podcast. So thank you for joining us and being the fourth brand sister. Welcome back. Welcome and happy Halloween week. Ooh, spooky season. Not spooky. only are you the fourth brand sister, you're the fourth member of TLC this week. Exactly. The fourth and non-existent member. Yeah. I know. Sorry. Well, the, now there's technically only two members. Well, if we're being Okay. Real. Well... Okay. D- way to bring it down right at the <laughs> yeah. beginning of the episode. Well, if you're not watching us on YouTube or Spotify, you're really missing out because things are super spooky and festive over here. We look cute. We honestly, like, you guys really pulled this together. Thank Thanks, you. Paige. Thanks, Thanks, Paige. Thanks, Paige. Honestly, I really do. I love a theme. Halloween, you know. I love a costume. Halloween. And whenever you gave... You're the hardest one to please when it comes 100%. to outfits, and you gave the green light to TLC, and so I knew I needed to deliver, and yeah. I did deliver. You did. These are good, and these this is all from Amazon. Yeah, and my two hands. Well, and Cindy's. And Cindy's. The, Cindy. This is from Cindy? Yeah. This is, yeah, that's the... Oh, you guys didn't get this from Amazon? No, no, the mesh tops are from Cindy's. Interesting. So shout out to Cindy's. Cindy's, it's like a sex store. Yeah, not yeah. a sponsor. Not a sponsor. <laughs> not yet. Um, and, you know, we love sex stores. Sure. Go sex stores. <laughs> Woohoo. Um, this is actually like a really good last minute co- costume. So this is coming out on what's Monday's date going to be? The 26th? So are people mm-hmm. celebrating Halloween this weekend? Yeah, not or the 26th. It's the 27th. 27th. The no, 28th. the 28th. So I don't know, are people celebrating Halloween this weekend or next weekend? Because well, this weekend's the 25th. Next weekend's November 1st. Well, and that's what's so weird is I really hate when the day of Halloween doesn't follow, doesn't happen on a weekend. Because like, yeah. it seem, this weekend seems too early to celebrate. Yeah. But next weekend, it's over. Right. I feel like Austin will probably celebrate both. both, but I feel like they might lean more towards next weekend because we agree. just had two big back to back weekends. Actually, I think people are celebrating Halloween this weekend. Well, I think it's hap- we do have a birthday slash Halloween party next weekend. Mm-hmm. For whom? Patrick. Patrick. And so we will be celebrating. But I mean, it just it's weird when it's not on a weekend. I think it's just got to be more defined on like what weekend you're going to celebrate it on because I guess for me it feels like if Halloween's on a Thursday you should celebrate it Thursday, Friday, Saturday not the weekend before yeah it's closer to this weekend than or the next weekend we just have to we just have to pretend like it's a birthday because it doesn't matter what day your birthday's on you just choose yeah just it's Halloween week yeah I also feel like Halloween is the kind of holiday that should fall on the last Saturday of the month more so than Thanksgiving being the third Thursday or whatever. Like Thanksgiving doesn't have a set date. I feel like Halloween is a way better. I think that is kind of what it does. No, Halloween is October 31st. 31st. No, I like it at the 31st. I don't want it to change. Like I don't like Thanksgiving like that. I don't like Thanksgiving and I don't like Easter. I'm going to say it right now. Because they're not the same days. Yeah. Okay. It's too weird. Okay. That's your prerogative. Yeah. I do. The one thing I do appreciate about Thanksgiving is them putting it on a Thursday. So you like usually get Friday off. Mm -hmm. I think that was like really clutch. I also just realized I didn't put on lip liner. Oh my God. What are we going to (laughs) do? No, like I like need to. Okay. Just you guys don't even need to stop. I just like. What do you do when you don't put on lip liner? I just, um. I think that the show should just like go on. Honestly, same, but that's okay. Um, do you have any Halloween plans besides our birthday Halloween party next week? Yes. So the other costume that I'm going to be, I'm reading A Midsummer Night's Dream right now. And that's, if you don't know, William Shakespeare. And so I'm going to be the King Fairy Oberon. So I'm going to use, I'm going to repurpose your Forrest Gump beard. Okay. I might try to make it a little more red. I might put some like butterflies or flowers or something in it because he's a fairy. I don't think you should make it red. 
Well, it looks red in the thing, but I I, I just, understand. Yeah, I'm just not wanting you to uh, dye the beard because you want to keep it. Yeah, that's a good beard. It is a good beard. I'm back. Oh, um, God. Okay. Oh, I, you look so much better. I know. Okay. Thank Jesus. So it was getting really spooky and it wasn't just Halloween. <laughs> Yeah, I actually look like 10 times better with the lip gloss on. Yeah. Um, okay, wait. I feel like we have really good ideas for three people if they need like a last minute Halloween costume that they could totally order off Amazon. Can Bailey finish her story real quick? Oh, sure. Yeah. I'm just going to be um, King Oberon at the fairies. Have you read uh, Midsummer Night's Dream? What's your favorite Shakespeare play, Jade? <laughs> I think Midsummer's Night Dream. Oops, sorry. I think um, Romeo and Juliet. He did that one, right? Mm-hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Good job. Okay. Well, um, I don't know who King Oberon is, so we can just move on. I also Let's don't think anyone listening to this knows who King Oberon is. I bet a lot of people William actually Shakespeare. do. William Shakespeare. I think we don't, but I think a lot of people do. Okay. Um, anyways, let's talk about our three our three costumes. Okay. So if you... TLC, obviously. If you are going... If you're in need of a last minute Halloween costume and you're going with like, you know, three girlies, we have some really good ideas for you. Obviously, we have TLC, T, Boz, Lisa, Left Eye, Lopez, and Chili. And then what have we been um, other years? Okay. We were Madonna, Brittany, and Christina. That was good. That was really good. That was the night Paige literally lost her mind and got into therapy like the next day. <sighs> no, that was really nuts. It was an um, awakening. No, it was. I... And honestly, that is my Lisa Left Eye kind of moment. You yeah. Know? Um, and well, she's saying that because Lisa Left Eye Lopez literally lit shoes on fire, put them in the bathtub, and then her boy, her yeah, and then the house burned down. <laughs> um, I also really liked the year that we were three different versions of Forrest Gump. That one was good. That one's also pretty easy. Yeah. Um, okay, we were also. Uh, we were Paris, Brittany, you and Lindsay. That. No, I didn't. Oh, you said Madonna. You said Madonna. Paris, Brittany, and Lindsay. When that iconic uh, picture where they are in the car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we've also been the Bears, like the super Bears fans. super fans, Da Bears. I also really liked when we were the presidents. <laughs> oh yeah, we were also yeah. sexy presidents. <laughs> yeah. I was Teddy Roosevelt. I was Abraham Lincoln. I was a uh, William Howard. Shaft. shaft yeah shaft yeah so i feel like if you need any um i'll put pictures in here when i clip this but if you guys need any last minute um halloween ideas those are all like really good really easy we pretty much get everything on amazon so pretty much anyways what else that's it okay cool um so i will be really honest i've I was in such a good mood today and We're probably the last like mood. 20 minutes really put a damper because the the Taylor Swift tickets for NOLA just kind of opened up right mm -hmm. before this started and I could have sworn on everything in my body that I signed up for NOLA yeah but it's it's telling me that I didn't so I'm really hoping that means that I signed up for Indy but what if you didn't? Then I don't know. I do remember you talking about both. So like, I'm sure you did. I just really thought that I chose Nola because it's closer to where I really I thought you chose Nola too. I know. I so too. Because what, I wanted you to register for Indy. So I'm really hoping that I did. Because at this point, I thought I chose New Orleans. And if I didn't choose either, what a dumbass I am. I feel like there's a very little chance that you didn't choose one of them. I guess we'll find out next week. But it's really depressing because every time I tried to get in the queue, it was like, you did not register for this city. Uh, uh, uh. I could have sworn you registered for NOLA. And it is like double sad because you did just post today that you had FOMO. Can't you find if you registered for something? I, probably somewhere in my inbox. Why don't you search that? Well, I'm not going to do it right now. Okay. So I can do it <laughs> later. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess we'll see. So Such now we're bummer. all in bad moods. Now we're all in bad moods, but I am really hoping that somebody is going to pull through and hook us up with some tickets because something big is going to happen in NOLA this week. I just know it. I know it in my... Jade, hold on. <laughs> Bailey, have you guys heard about the whole... 
conspiracy theory that Kendall and Joe Alwyn might be dating. No, she's dating Devin Booker. Okay. They always break up. I know, but I'm sorry. Kendall Jenner is not going to date Joe Alwyn. But why would she? Just because of the... (laughs) I'm sorry, but like I like you need to get off Swift Talk. Like you need to. It's literally you are in one section of the internet, no. and everything in the entire world revolves around Taylor Swift. Well, and allegedly, I, it's because the Kardashians are are putting these feelers out. Whether it's true or not, they're putting these feelers out because Reputation's about to come out, which stop. is like negative about Kanye and Kim. So they're trying to have other, uh, like bigger, bigger news that would completely just negate that whole thing then because that couldn't be more negative because people are going to hate Kendall for dating Joe. Well, because you Swifties would, would, are unwell. It would take the heat off of Kim. One sister but taking she, a bullet they don't for the want other. The heat, they don't want the heat on anyone. We'll see what happens. I know. I, I just like don't hate when you I get down these like rabbit holes because there's it's so literally my un- whole TikTok. I know, but like you need like other hobbies. Okay. What are your hobbies? housewives <laughs> <laughs> okay what else um cooking going to the grocery store your I'm, hobby is going to the grocery store literally my hobby is going to the grocery okay, store okay my it's, hobby is week. making sourdough so is mine well you haven't made a loaf yet <laughs> okay well i have a very active starter okay today maybe no it's been active like have then why haven't you made a loaf because i am waiting for the right time okay in my well, life i'm too busy at the grocery store <laughs> <laughs> like you know it's not gonna i also like active. to work out i like to walk uh-huh. i like to take my dog to the dog park i like to eat at restaurants <laughs> i like to drink apples and bananas great i like to oat apples <laughs> and bananas i have a ton of hobbies great yeah i like to go on instagram that's a hobby of mine i like to go on instagram and tiktok yeah and i love my algorithm i have to say right now I am very much favoring Instagram. My Instagram Reels algorithm is absolutely insane. (laughs) I never get on Reels. I think it's so funny. Like it's like the thing that I love most about Reels is that you will see something and you'll just know why it goes, why it went viral without even going to the comments. And then you go to the comments and there's thousands of people who are thinking the same thing as you, but they're just mean enough to say it. (laughs) So it's like somebody who like, there's something not quite right with like their outfit or their way they're talking or something. And then people have to be so fucking mean and point it out. And it's like absolutely hilarious. People are really mean. <laughs> kind of like Jamie. Well, well, well. Jade has um, this troll Jamie and she's a new troll. She just has like no constructive criticism. She just commented on Jade's solo podcast episode and she said i just stumbled upon this today and this is nauseating it's disgusting so <laughs> gross and i'm like she goes about it no she was like you think you're an expert at weddings but you have never been married and i was like honey don't even go there like that's a simple google search you can see that i have been married and divorced <laughs> but and your could- wedding was great and it was great. Um, but I will. So I did a podcast episode of the Tea with Jade B, my other podcast. I'm just like a podcast superstar, basically. And um, we, I, we, me, myself and I were talking about <laughs> um, wedding plus ones because I have a very like polarizing take on wedding plus ones. I feel like in most cases you should be giving the single girlies a plus one hundred percent. And I think a lot of people have this defense where they're like, I don't want to meet a stranger at my wedding. And it's like, what is a stranger going to do to you at your wedding? It's not like they're going to scare you. I know or like strangle you. It's not like a stranger is walking into your house. Yeah. Like unannounced. It's like your very close friend, your trusted your Im- friend, your trusted friend doesn't want to go alone. Doesn't want to go alone. They might want to have like a, a time where they can like have somebody that like buoys their night. If they're night is buoyed your night is going to be buoyed and by the way as somebody who was a bride despite what um jamie has to say (laughs) there's like you don't have time to sit and talk with a bunch of people like no one's going to be monopolizing your time at the wedding if anything like the guest the stranger guest is going to monopolize somebody else's time yeah and it's but it never has brought the vibe down at any wedding i've been to i've been to so many weddings and the plus one is never the issue. It's always the guest that's yeah. actually the issue because they're a little comfortable. Yeah. 
Yeah, I I have gone solo. I think there's only been a very few number of weddings that I haven't been given a plus one. Mm -hmm. Most of the time I am offered the option for a plus one. And honestly, I usually take Bailey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that I don't, especially if I'm traveling, I don't want to travel by myself. Yeah. I don't, because the wedding, the bride is busy. Like my friend is going to be busy. I'm not yeah. going to be like, all of my other friends are married. Especially if it's like a friend like Taylor Clark, someone that you're super close to. You probably don't know all of her friends. Totally. Maybe you know a few, but not enough to like feel super comfortable when you're like traveling by yourself to and go be to a wedding. Her friend's third wheel. Like, cause they yeah. all have their exactly their boyfriends or fiancés or whatever. And then you end up just having like a lonely time. It makes you feel it makes the guest feel so lonely sometimes. So lonely, so depressed. Literally like, so depressed. The only time it's worked for me is when my like the group of friends that I'm going with, like we get like a house together or something. Yeah. And then I then it doesn't matter as much. But like if it's if I'm getting my own hotel room, my own trap like if I'm doing everything by myself, I realize how lonely I am and I'm like, wow, this I'm so sad. Well, and I feel like a lot of these brides, like a lot of them, not all of them, have probably not been in this situation in their like 30s because I think it's different going to a wedding alone in your like early to mid 20s versus in your 30s like it's so much more lonely like I've I went to weddings alone in my early 20s when my friends like you know the ones who get married really quickly yeah and that's so different I feel like that's an exception like if you're getting married and you're like 23 24 25 like maybe your friends don't all need plus ones it's like more of a party yeah it's more of a party instead of an event and it's like if you're getting married that early like it's weird like it's just like a different vibe like when you get married in your 30s it's like it's a more of a serious vibe because you're yeah. kind of like coming off the coattails of college when you're getting married in that young um I also think the other exception is if there's like a ton of people at the wedding that all know each other and they're all single and like you want to have a smaller wedding then I think that's fine but if there's like a lone ranger like you have to give them a plus one yeah like it's just so rude and I I honestly like I keep seeing these TikToks that are like we have been so hard on brides for so many years brides have taken the brunt of a lot of society's criticism I'm like brides are not this like this this group that is like this no you're a bride word? for such a like Short finite amount. amount of time you cannot identify as a bride for too long what right and like brides aren't this like forlorn group of people that like didn't choose this they're like yeah. acting like they are like an oppressed group or something yeah. like it is a it is a privilege to have a wedding it is a privilege for all this stuff like you're it's like literally the epitome of first world problems it's literally like the epitome of kim there's people that are dying yeah, yeah. also i do have to say i don't think I think for me personally, the plus one thing really matters with the travel. Like if one of my friends yeah. was getting married in Austin and if I didn't have a plus one, I don't think I would really think twice about it. Mm -hmm. It's it's just the the travel weddings. If I have to like get on a plane or if I have to drive, you know, hours yeah. or whatever and I'm getting a hotel, like that's when it really matters. Well, I will say I went to a local wedding, not in Austin, but when I lived in OC and it was with like all my friends and it was honestly the most lonely event. I like felt so awkward. I like had to like invite myself into all these like couple conversations. And it was like not too long after I got divorced too. And it was just like so fucking sad. And I was like, I hate this. I'm leaving. Yeah. And I was like trying to dance. And I was like had the best <laughs> outlook going into it. Because I was like, this isn't going to be weird. I know so many people here. Yeah. Like it like literally my best friends were there. Like. It was just, it just felt so lonely. And it wasn't like the Brian and the groom's fault. It was just like lonely times. Yeah. Yep. Been lonely there. vibes. Sorry. Yeah. So that's I think that a lot of people think about how much the meals cost per head. But then what are you prioritizing? The vibes or like your photographer or whatever? Yeah. You should prioritize the vibes over everything. Because like the vibe of your wedding is just going to be more fun if you focus on like, okay, the vibe versus like, okay, this person, it's going to cost me $125 a head. I understand weddings are so expensive, but when you're talking about like 10 people getting plus ones, I mean, that's a thousand dollars, but like, and you honestly. can be choosy about who you give them to. If it's already someone that you're throwing a bone to, to like 
even give them an invite you don't have to give them one or don't invite them yeah yeah or or it goes back to like okay these people are single but they're from this town blah 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 these people are also single yep. they're Be traveling discerning. so you know i'm gonna give them the plus one whatever like you can still pick and choose but just think about how fucking lonely these single people exactly. are. exactly and also jamie you can literally lick my asshole yeah. yeah suck my ass jamie yeah and i think you're actually nauseating you know what's nauseating is to leave a hate comment on a spotify account I know. Like, that's, like, honestly the most loser behavior. Like, when I see some of the shit that people post publicly on, like, videos online. Yeah. Especially men. I'm like, you are so embarrassing. Well, it's because they're men. Like, men literally have, like, I don't know. It's because they're just men. Like, they have the audacity that it's just like, who are you? Like You I, shouldn't even have an Instagram account, let no, alone be commenting truly. on publicly. <laughs> like, like, what makes you as a man see somebody's post and it bothers you so much that you feel the need to tear that person down? And it's always a guy that has, like, their wife in their profile picture or, like, their wife has tagged them in things. And it's so easy to find their wife. And it's, like, you are embarrassing your family. Yeah. And it's, yeah. like, always, like, a really, like, redneck, right-wing kind of guy who probably, like, loves Jesus. And it's, like, yep, you, you definitely really embodying that. Embodying the, the blood of Christ. <laughs> the blood of Christ. Christ. Yeah. That's... What a bummer. Crazy. Yeah. Men, what a bummer. Men, what a bummer. Um, anyways, who are you guys voting for? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, what else uh, has been going on? Um, not much. I'm like trying to lose weight per usual. Cool. People tell me people are probably sick of hearing me say that, but you know, that's just okay. always on my mind. I'm just I have to be real. Okay. Sorry, I had an itchy ear. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um I am really happy to say, I don't know if you guys remember earlier in the year, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to put this goal out for myself, this crazy goal to read five books in 2024. And I did it. Oh my God. Wow. wow. I just finished my fifth book. It's The Housemaid. And is it good? It was so good. Is it as good as people say? Yeah. Well, people also say Layla is really good by Colleen Hoover, and that book literally blows. <laughs> I haven't read it yet, but I do. I have been told to read it. No, actually, can you read Layla next? Yeah, I would love to. I would love your analysis of Layla. I can't even talk about it because I don't want to spoil it for you. Well, people had told me because I liked Verity, and so they recommended Layla because I liked Verity. Same. Oh no. Same. Oh no. I also think but Verity, people also Verity recommended was, it ends with us and I fucking hated that book. It but the movie was like, better. I didn't see it. But Verity like isn't even that good. Like if you've it's read Gone Girl, Verity isn't good. But I didn't read Gone Girl. You're missing out. Honestly, Gone Girl is <laughs> such a fucking good book. I remember reading Gone Girl and driving from Keller to Austin and being in traffic and being like, can I read and drive at the same time? Like, I cannot put this no. book down. I'm going to <laughs> literally no. But I was so tempted. I didn't. I'm glad so I didn't. It. I'll. I wish I could go back and like erase my brain and like reread Gone Girl because it was just it was before it's it was like one of the first of its kind kind yeah. of. Well, I don't know if this is a problem with me, but the reason I would have. A, I would have trouble going back and reading Gone Girl now is because I've seen the movie. Yeah. And yeah, I, mean, I, I don't kind like, of like doing that. I know. Like you kind of blew your load. But there. when the movie came out, like I didn't even know how to read. Like I thought Girl on the Train was better than Verity. I agree. I just I don't understand the Verity hype. Maybe I'm a Colleen Hoover like hater, but I just well, feel like we know that. <laughs> <laughs> I literally made a girl cry because she liked Colleen Hoover. <laughs> that was so weird. She was being weird. I know. She loved Colleen Hoover. No, she was upset. Colleen Hoover was her Taylor Swift. That was weird. But she couldn't explain that. I know. That was she the couldn't get the words out. And I was like, speak. Like, why are you crying about Colleen Hoover? Like, tell me what is so special about her. I know. And you were like, Chade, stop. It was like, you were being like a mean big sister, but like, we didn't know this person. <laughs> and so I was like, it. we are used to that behavior, but like somebody else who you can tell is probably an only child. Yeah. <laughs> they no. don't understand that behavior. You know, like, 
it's such a weird thing. It's like so instinctual. It's almost like animalistic. As an older sister, I can always pick up on like little sister vibes and like people just kind of fall in line around me. And like sometimes I find myself like bullying people like they're you guys. And I'm like, oh, no, you're my friend. Like I can't. Bully okay, but you. do you know what's also funny about that? Um, today at work, there's this girl. She's like kind of new, like not really. I love her, but she me and Patrick, like we we're kind of I don't know. We we bicker kind of like siblings. OK. Yeah. And we always tease each other. And this girl, Patrick, was teasing me because every everyone from work was in this like cute little like work photo group photo except for me and Patrick was like oh yeah we did this on purpose kind of thing and she just picked up on it and she was acting like an older sister she's like yeah and then this picture of them all laughing she was like someone said where's Paige and I said no one cares like and and, like you were like I thought it was so funny because I was like oh she's she's like bullying me like Jade bullies me and I was like wait why am I going along with this? Like, it just like, I just fell in line of like, oh, this is my older sister. <laughs> That's so I was like, funny. I'm used to this. <laughs> it's like really funny how you just kind of fall in line with like, because I think a lot of people also I'm, I'm older than like all of my friends now, which is like so weird because I went from being like the young friend to the old friend. <laughs> and now people kind of like look at me like an older sister and I'm like, I'd rather you just like not. I want to be your peer. No, I want to be your like baby. Oh, like I used to be like everyone's like baby sister because you were always the youngest and I'm always like acting like a baby like I can't take care of myself and now <laughs> you not only are you not the youngest because you were just a little bit younger than your friends yeah but now you're like <laughs> you're like you're not even their older sister it's like you're like the older sister where it's like I'm the like pa- their aunt <laughs> <laughs> You're their auntie. Like, Taryn, I'm literally 10 years older than yeah, Taryn. Ba- ba- your little sister, your littlest sister is older than Taryn. My littlest sister is older than some of most, of, like a lot of my Almost friends. Almost all. Yeah, yeah, it's so fucking weird. I'm like, how did I get here? Um. Anyways, back to um my book stuff so but i oh, yeah i wanted to read that book the housemaid because of the movie that they're making mm-hmm. with amanda seafried and uh sydney sweeney so super pumped about it i know there's a couple other books in that little series mom has them so i'm gonna get them from her mom has them yeah mom reads mom is the one who gave me the housemaid it at least six months or more ago and she was like you're really gonna like this and you know what's funny? I was on the plane. Like the other, a physical book? Physical book. I was on the the plane the other day when I read The Housemaid. And the girl that sits next to me, she was reading Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And I am I have The Housemaid. And I look at her and I was like, oh, you're really going to like that. And she said, <laughs> well, I saw your book and you're really going to like that. Oh, my <laughs> God. Like, oh, my gosh. It was really cute. It was such That's a cute moment. so cute. Um, Bailey's a very early adopter of Seven hu- Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Yeah, it was one of the first. Yeah. It was that is one of my favorite books. Also, speaking of I mean, Paige I've only read five, but. bringing um, <laughs> the housemaid with her on her trip she was just on, she had all of her stuff laid out ready to pack. And I saw her little book and she said something that was like a little annoying or something. And I was like, I'm going to rip your little bookmark out of your book and you're going to lose your place. And Paige said, Joke's on you. I haven't even read that book. And I was like, This is a prop <laughs> bookmark. <laughs> just match your bookmarks to the cover okay i needed to put the bookmark in the book so i didn't lose it but i hadn't started reading it yet and it's better when it's like deep in the book yeah like like i didn't want it to fall out yeah jokes on you haven't even started it's like all right well i guess a prop joke is on me um anyways what else do i have on my little list anyways oh what I don't even want to talk about it. Never mind. No, tell me. No, you're going to be annoyed. No, tell me. No, you're going to be annoyed. Just say it. Is it about the Kelsey brothers? No, we can talk about them. No. What, <laughs> no, what were you going to say? I was going to talk about Zach Bryan and uh, Brianna Chicken Friend. No, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about really? that. Really? Yes. Do you know anything about this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know about it? I know that he cheated on her and it's very sad. I don't know. If Wait, it's confirmed he that he cheated. Oh, that's the only thing I know. So enlighten me. Well, well, maybe you should enlighten I know. us. <laughs> like, what have you seen? I see you guys see like the depths of the internet. I only see the surface. Well, so, so anything I've seen, you've seen and tenfold. So they broke up, and he, he immediately got on Raya. But he's such, he's such a 
dirty dog. Like he's just so annoying. But I don't know why. I don't know why me or anyone else is surprised because he really does just play the same game every single time he yeah. breaks up with somebody. And I think everyone just hopes because he is he has good songs like he's a musician and we like his music that oh this time's different like i think yeah. everyone kind of hopes that and he's not going to be but it's the same thing every single time they break up you know privately whatever and then he doesn't tell her anything he just gets on raya and then posts on his instagram well i think what happened is that they broke up he, he immediately got on Raya and, and was saw. just like, you know, doing his little fuck boy thing. And then obviously people are going to see that because he's in a very public relationship. Of course, people are going to talk about it. I don't care if it's Raya. And then he immediately had to put out a statement. So he didn't yeah. think people were so people didn't think that he was cheating. The statement was so poorly written. Wait, it was like, did, can you read the wait, statement? I'm going to read it because it's literally it, like. My, You're a songwriter, and this is what you say. No, my jaw dropped. I know. I was like, I don't even know how to read this. Um, how long has he been famous? Like, what you say? It's the same story. Like, how? Well, because he's done this to two girls before Brianna. But my problem is with the internet that the internet has been really hard on Brianna Chicken Fry, and I'm not like taking her side or whatever. I there's just whatever. I feel very like neutral, like no feelings about her. But the internet has been like, like exalting up his exes, like his two exes. They were like, oh my gosh, that's his true love. He doesn't even like Brianna Chicken Fry. It's like, you don't even know this guy. And I'm sure like, honestly, if you met him, he probably wouldn't like you because like you're acting like a fucking freak by commenting on his relationship when you know absolutely nothing about it and like if he's done this to two girls before her he probably is going to do it to this girl why are you standing this guy yeah. like why why is he the one that you are putting on this pedestal when you've seen the way he's treated his exes and now you like hate his current girlfriend because you like his ex-girlfriend better and you also, don't even know either of them i like brianna it's just like it's it's like regardless of Brianna, it's literally so fucking weird fan behavior. Like fans are so fucking weird. Okay, I have to read it though. So he posts a story. He says, Brianna and me, Brianna and me have broken up with each other. And wait, read it in like a country accent. So it makes a little bit more sense. Brianna and me have broken up with each other. And I respect and love her with every ounce of my heart. She is, she has loved me unconditionally for a very long time. And for that, I'll always thank her. First of all, and for that, I'll always thank her. Like, like what? And for that, I'll always be thankful. Yeah. But like, but she has loved me for a very long, bitch. That, I thought that was rude. I thought that yeah. was very rude. Okay. Continues. I have had an incredibly hard year personally and struggled through some pretty severe things. I thought it would be beneficial for both of us to go our different ways. I'm not perfect and never will be. Buena. Please respect Brianna's privacy and space in this and in this. And if you have it in your heart, mine too. Well, I thought it was like weird to start it out with like me and Brianna have broken up with each other. And she's loved me unconditionally. It's so, like, let's uh, let's analyze that first sentence. Yeah. Me and Brianna have broken up with no, each other. Brianna and me. Brianna and me have broken up with each other. Like, what do you mean? Why don't you just say me and Brianna are no longer in a relationship. We have loved each other very much. She's loved me when I probably didn't even need deserve it. And for that, I'm I will, a piece of shit. I'm a piece of shit. She I will, kept she kept believing every lie I told. I am very thankful to her for that. Can you please protect her privacy if you have it in your heart? Protect mine. And why didn't he say we loved each other unconditionally for a long time? She has loved me. Un I didn't give a fuck about her. Like, that's what I'm like. Well, on. OK, that's your like psychotic. Yeah, I'm triggered. kind of. Yeah, you're triggered. triggered by like your own past with that one. I think what he's saying is like she has loved him despite like all the shit he's put her through. Cause I think that they had broken up before and she like kind of didn't want to talk about it. But I just thought the way he's handled this is like, it shows a leopard has never changed. It won't change his spots. And I hate when people are like, you get them how you lose them. We don't fucking know no. how they got together. Yeah. I don't care about that. But like, it's just the fact that she 
was not expecting to see him on rise so soon. She was not expecting this statement to be put out. She was not expecting because if he's going to do this, like common courtesy would be like, hey, just letting you know, like I'm posting I'm posting this on Instagram, like I'm announcing the breakup. Like she didn't know that he was going to do that. So obviously people are going to be flooding her. So she's already really sad. And now she's, you know, having to deal with people being like, you know, whatever. And it's just so annoying. And then Bailey, and then he teases a song that he wrote about Brianna. Like in good times or bad. And it's like, (laughs) it's like, it doesn't matter. Like, why are you even teasing new music off the heels? I mean, I guess like that's what they do, but I'm it's, just sorry. Like, he is such a loser. Like, it, he's proven. And like, just stop drinking. Get yourself help. Get the fuck off the internet. You should not be on the internet. And now Dave Portnoy is just like so happy he can finally like express his true feelings. About- yeah, because did you see how he went on that show? And they were like, oh, yes. tell us. And he was like, I've never liked him. Yeah. And um, he, you know who Dave Portnoy is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> but he tweeted, he said, like, this one's for Brianna. And then he just put Taylor Swift's The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived. And that was kind of the start of it. But then he goes on, like, a, a show. show. And basically, he was like, I never liked him. But I kind of trust Dave Portnoy's, like, discretion on that. I do, too. Yeah. Say what you want about Dave, but, like, he doesn't really lie. Yeah. You know? So, um, RIP to them. Sorry, guys. That's All a bummer. Right. Honestly, Brianna Chicken Fry, she's f- going to be fine. She's, totally. Like, she's so young. It's fine. Like, Zach Bryan's not going to be fine. Like, he needs to get it together. He's like... You know what? He'll probably be fine this time. But, like, his time will come. Like, he's... he, Like... It's going to catch up to him. Like, but karma like, will get this man. The thing about guys dating these, like, any sort of traditionally famous person, like a singer, actor, whatever, dipping their toe into the online world, the way that people, influencers, creators have a relationship with their online community is so intense. And it's very, like, fierce in a way. Like, I think an exception is obviously Taylor Swift. She is kind of the same connection. But, like... In this case, Zach Bryan dipping his toe into like the influencer world. I just don't know if they know what they're dealing with when the Internet is going to turn on you. And I'm not I don't know how the Internet's going to treat him, but I'm trying to think of like another creator where it's like we just feel very like like personal with our creators, you know, so like when these like actors and musicians try to do their like Hollywood PR shit with us it's like no we want answers and like the creators always will give us the answer so be careful when you're dating a creator I'll tell you that much you heard it you heard straight from the horse's mouth straight from the horse (laughs) yeah nay bitch (laughs) feeling froggy feeling froggy page (laughs) oh god should we tell that story one day one day we did did we Probably not to its fullest extent. I'll bet you that much. Can we just tell like the like a very like. No, I think that we did because we talked well, because it started. I think we might have new listeners. So let's just tell the story. So I hate when people talk about things. And well, then let us talk about it. OK, then talk about it. OK, all right. it all started because Bailey changed her phone number and nobody would listen to me like our family group chats, like our extended family. They would always create an, another group chat with Bailey's old number and I would right. correct them I'm like Bailey's number changed it's this Bailey's is the number, new number changed 10, ten years ago <laughs> it's like it was like two years ago whatever and no one I was invisible like I don't know like it, Bailey was invisible there were too many feelings they couldn't see through the rage to read so your anyways text. somebody put us all in a group text like a bunch of people but from this our family person had been getting the Bailey's old number whoever has it now had been getting text messages from our family for a long time yeah but okay so this person in our family put a bunch of people from our family on a group text including Bailey's old number <laughs> and we are like battling in this text like we are like saying some like uh relationship ending things yeah. in the chat and you know like you know how we get like we're very like you know supportive like we're like 
and i don't even know we're like sisters i don't even know what i said but one of our family members responded i guess i was being a little spicy yeah because Paige started challenging this one family (laughs) member and she was kind of like asking for answers that this person wouldn't tell me wouldn't give us the answers because and we knew the answers and this person wouldn't give i wanted them to tell me right so that family member said this (laughs) iconic line you're feeling froggy page and i was like okay weirdo like <laughs> what the fuck does that mean like jump like into like a street and i'm like bitch like, i froggy? jumped i already jumped let's go yeah you should have said ribbit ribbit bitch let's <laughs> fucking go but but the best part of the story is bailey's old number finally chimes in <laughs> like and 75 text messages later at At least. Least. And we're going back and forth and like this one family member is going fucking psychotic and she's like, I know where all the bodies are buried. And it's like, OK, bitch, like we are just a, a small little family from East Texas like they are. But like there's no bodies buried anywhere. Yeah. Relax. Stop making yourself a little like more important than you think that you are. <laughs> like this isn't the mafia. <laughs> and anyways, this the, Bailey's old number finally chimes in and says, I know all of your secrets. And Paige and I start dying laughing. I call. I was at work. I had to run out of the building and call Paige because I was crying laughing. Because then, of course, that finally got people's attention. They said, who is this? And I said, that's Bailey's. I, in, the, in the group chat, I said, that's Bailey's old number. I've told you guys a million fucking times. Her number has changed. And like everyone just like went ghost silent imagine this person is just like sitting at work because it was like in the middle of the day and they're like what is this and it's like all these random ass numbers and they're just like losing their mind on each other and like you could definitely tell like we were family because the way because we we were talking the most atrocious things to each other (laughs) no it was so crazy and now like we don't talk to anyone so that's yeah, that. because ribbit ribbit bitch yeah you're feeling froggy page what a loser and it's so funny like what what about stay out of it page was that from that that was from that too <laughs> because <laughs> oh because after that because that family member started the group chat and so Paige is welcome to chime in i'm not i'm not in the chat they don't include both my numbers well, i'm like page what they say next it's well, happening now she goes stay out of it page because i said well what about this incident that happened one time yeah. and she was pissed because that's well, not page- what she was talking about yeah <laughs> and i i if we're gonna do this first of all i don't love a group chat but i especially don't love a group chat with that many people on it and also like you shouldn't have a group chat discussing what we were discussing. Well, and it's like she had this agenda, like in her mind, like she was creating this group chat because it was like, I am going to like, I'm going to like put my big dick on the table. <laughs> and I was like, your dick is not big. And like, she's the kind of person that like leads with um, fear and anger versus like actual like leadership skills. Like, and she- I wasn't scared. And no one was fucking scared of her. It's like we, we are ready like, to go toe to toe. But like with some you. of our other family members were like, so, like so sweet about it. They they were a little more like loving and nurturing in their approach. And I'm just like, well, what about this? Well, what yeah. about this? Stay out of it, Paige. <laughs> and I'm like, bitch, you put me in here. Like <laughs> what you, do you put me in what here. Do you mean stay out of it. You literally put me on a group tax. This is insane. Uh, no, because like they don't like when they start getting called out for shit. Like. I'm sorry, our family, just to, like a background of our family, our family is like from like the sticks, like very country. Our grandma moved to California when my mom was super, super young. So that's kind of like why we are like not in that yeah. crew, but like we're still all family. And it just got like it, the stuff that happens. It's very redneck. Like people pushing each other at the family events, like pushing like your elderly aunt, like that's like the kind of shit that went down. What uh, the hoedown throwdown or whatever Miley says. That is what Miley says. Yeah, yeah. It was a hoedown throwdown at Thanksgiving one year, Hell but yeah, it, was it was not very fun. It wasn't. You don't very put fun. your hawk hawk in the sky, move left to right, dun dun dun, and stick it slide. Yeah, you know Miley. Anyways. Um, so, that was that. That's our family. That's our family. Um, was our family. <laughs> Not anymore. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just by blood. Anyways, what else? Well, speaking of family, 
we are sisters and we're going to Chicago in a couple weeks. That's true. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Have you bought your ticket? I did not. Once you just said that, I was like, shit. I, you should buy. I should ticket. do that so yeah. I can also go. Yeah. yeah. Um. You should try to get on the same flights as me. Yeah. You sent me it. Where are you flying? Southwest. Where everyone's first class. I love Southwest. Are you same. Fly- so are you flying into Midway? <laughs> um. No. You're flying into O'Hare. O'Hare. They fly into O'Hare now. They used to only fly into Midway. So, I am actually we're we're driving to Keller because my dogs are gonna. My dogs are gay. Um, <laughs> do you know what movie that's from? <laughs> no, but your dogs literally are gay. No, I know, but it's from Legally Blonde too. Um, anyways, so my dogs are so high maintenance. Um, they, I can't board them at their normal boarding place. So thank God for our family friends. Um, Jet and Sarah are going to watch my dogs at mom and dad's house for the weekend. Okay. So we're going to drive up to Keller, leave the dogs there. So then we're going to fly out of Dallas. Okay. Nice. And then into O'Hare. Um, are you on the same flight as mom and dad? So they're not flying Southwest, Southwest, I guess, but we coordinated our times. Nice. So we'll be able to, you know, get in the same Uber. But at least that's the way they're. I don't know what their return flight is like because we're going to have to fly into Dallas, pick up the dogs, and then drive back to Austin. Mm-hmm. Um, on Monday? On Monday. On Monday. On Monday. I am so excited. Um, we're talking to the Chicago Bears. So this is going to be super exciting. Hopefully, um, they they want to hear some like concepts for content for us. So I'm working on that right now. Um, I think it would be like so iconic if we got dad like any sort of pregame situation. Like he would literally cry. No, I don't even know what he would do. He, he might have a heart attack. I just like I need people to understand how much this man loves the Chicago Bears. Like, first of all, he literally only wears Chicago Bears merch. That's it's only thing he ever wears. The only thing that might not be Chicago Bears is his underwear. And that's <laughs> and his and jeans honestly, with like well, the, and his, and his with jeans. the strap for his hammer. Like but he he loves a cargo jean. He he when does we watched the game with my boyfriend Nebraska who was wearing an orange shirt but not a bear shirt. Dad was wearing two bear shirts, a normal shirt and like a the and the, the, shirt. The Hawaiian Yeah. The Hawaiian. Dad was like, "Should I take this like should I give you one of them? And my boyfriend was like, maybe. Like, I don't know. And dad was like, I he wanted both of them. He needed he needed all of the bear stuff. That's so dad to like offer and then be like, I don't He's actually like, want well, I don't to. know if this is weird. And also I need I need them both. Yeah. Like, so he our entire lives, we have never lived in Illinois. The reason why we are Bears fans, and people always ask, why are you a Bears well, fan? Dad and it's not because it's like, oh no, let me just finish telling okay. the story. So our entire lives, we have been Bears fans, but people always ask me like, why are you a Bears fan? And it's not like, why are you a Bears fan? You've never lived in Illinois. It's like, why are you a Bears fan? <laughs> like, why would you subject yourself to this fandom, yeah. you know? And it's like, because our dad is from Illinois and like, we've always been the lone family that are Bears fans. Like we lived in um, LA County. There's a bunch of like Chargers and um, Rams fans there. We lived in Dallas. It's all Cowboys fans. We we're always the only Bears fan. And every single year, this man says, this is our year. Are you guys excited? The ba- This is the Bears year. <laughs> yeah. Or he'll say, my favorite is, after the after the draft, he'll be like, "All right, all right, this upcoming season, it might not be this season, it might not be next, but the season after that, it's our year." Yeah, like he has literally never lost hope in the Bears his entire life, and I cannot say the same. Like, I'm sorry, but like Cowboys fans wish that they could be like Bears fans because Bears fans like they just weather the storm mm-hmm. so much better. Like Cowboys fans like are such little bitches about mm-hmm. the losses they're so shocked every time they lose and like dad's shocked in a very like midwestern like, way oh He's like, man dad. we'll get him, we'll get him next like, time oh, god okay next game we're <laughs> in germany or we're in austria and he has a streaming his phone i don't even think he could watch the game i think he was just refreshing the score yeah and like you just see like he still has hope even up to like the last quarter like the last minutes of the game he's like who knows
knows what can happen? You, n- you never know. We have the ball. Cowboys fans literally could never. Never. Shots fired at the Cowboys. I, I like the Cowboys, though. I, that's like my second team, I'd say. Yeah. But like, st- but the fans like could never. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, what, I'm just so excited to see dad in his element with so many other people like yeah. dad. I know, because we've never seen dad in a sea of other bears of other dads yeah well we've seen with a sea of other dads no i mean like but like other like (laughs) midwestern yeah Yeah. other like andy's because everything it's not just his wardrobe it's literally like it it it, it's it's in his blood yeah like Like his his voice (laughs) it's in his accent his shop like all of his tools are orange like Every little p pe- it's the little neon lights. It's the little bears logos. It's there's his the beer kegs. Every single thing that can anything that the bears have made, he probably owns some some form of yeah, it. Yeah, there's like a like an accessory in our house that is has a bears version of it. We have it. There's just bears everywhere. Yeah. I so, love it. I know. So it's gonna be exciting because I've never seen dad because when I went to college at Purdue, half the school pretty much is from Chicago. So there's a lot of Bears fans there. And I remember being like, oh, my God, like, this is so crazy. Like, I've never seen so many Bears fans like you. I almost grew up thinking like we are so weird, like no one else <laughs> even knows who the Bears yeah. are. You know, like you don't see anyone else rooting for the Bears. So it is, is going to be so cool to see dad like with all of his fellow fans. It's like he's like the finally like found his like puzzle piece. You know? I what I would really love is if we could do some kind of okay Chicago Bears this is for you this is an idea I would love to take Andy on like a tailgating adventure or whatever with like the real Bears fans like what I've been told is like the closer you get to the stadium it's like the OG like tailgating Bears fans that have Uh the season tickets and it's just like like the vibes the vibes are high we should do like man on the street videos and like bring our little microphone and be like and ask them questions yeah like who like and just see if they're like dad i would love that (laughs) have you ever been to a tractor pole (laughs) i mean that doesn't really have anything i was thinking like bears related questions well they have in common with dad it's the midwest i feel like everyone does tractor well it's chicago it's literally the Mm. third largest city like not everyone in illinois is like uh doing tractor pulls no but chicago it's a good question chicago and like all the suburbs it's like dfw it's like nobody but like even more urban you know it's like i'm pumped I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Yeah, Mr. Roberts is coming. It's going to be interesting seeing Mr. Roberts on a trip with our family. I feel like he's going to need to like. I'm a little take, nervous. Like take some like sort of. I mean, he would never. He like does not take even like Advil. But I'm like, if he would, I would. I would recommend like a Xanax. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. The reason why I'm nervous, but I hate that I just said that because, you know. What I've always been told, what I've always been told, what your previous boyfriends have always said, and I don't know about yours, but they're always like, oh, you guys are too much. Like, Paige, you're too much. Like, oh, being around your family is too much. And it's like, I know it's like a high energy kind of thing, but I just feel like the right people like won't think it's too much. It's like maybe, you know, like that was a fun weekend and yeah. we don't need to do that every single weekend. But like, I just feel like the right people won't say you're well, you you guys are too much. Are we too much? You're, or you're too are loud. You not enough. Exactly. My ex boyfriends loved our family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we R. go. R.I.P. Sorry. Sorry, Bailey. R.I.P. I mean, I think our family is really great, and so I think that honestly, I'm our not family surprised sh- that someone thought our family was great. I think that everyone would think. Our I think our great. family is very stressful. The way we communicate is like not normal. Like we scream at each other when we're just trying to figure out like a simple question. Like going from Mr. Roberts' family <laughs> to like ours uh, on Christmas, it's like ours. We are yelling. Our level of just like basic co- talking is at an eight. And like Mr. Robert's family, like they're fun. They're like outgoing and stuff. But like the way they talk is like it's a so much more level. clear. They don't talk over each other. They just wait till the other person's done talking and then they like speak. It's but just there's it's also like, not. Do you want breakfast this morning or not? And then our family would be like, well, I okay, want. What are we doing? Are we getting are we breakfast? Are we going to have some sausage? Just okay. tell me what you want for breakfast. Fast. I'm just going to go to Taco.
Taco Bell and get some bean and cheese burritos. Yeah. Like that's literally our family. And it's like, okay, like no one even has a chance to like talk things out. They're just like screaming. True. True. Cool. Well. Yeah, so I see you at the see you at the Soldier Field, Bears. Da Bears. November tenth. Bears versus Patriots, baby. Um, who you got um, for the game? Bears. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Who the blasphemy? Who do you got? Bears. I hope. Say it with the chest. Bears. You got that orange C on you. You should be channeling it right bears. now. Bears. Bears. Yeah. The bears. The Chicago Bears. Goal um, bears. Bears by a hundred. Where um what else do you have to talk about? Mm, that's it for me. Bailey? Um, just Shakespeare for me. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> what about I mean, okay, so is that it? Like, are we done? Do you have anything you want to say? Not really. Well, Let's see if I have anything in my little thing. Let's see if I have anything in my little thing. Well, I think that this was great. I think that I hope everyone has a really safe Halloween weekend. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we will be back the following Monday after Halloween to do a little recap. Hell yeah. Of our Halloween. And um, maybe we can talk about like what we're doing to prepare for the Bears game a little more. By that time, by that point, I will have all of my outfits. I did order a new jacket. Ooh, that is going to be here soon. So um, we can talk about our outfits and make sure that we're all cute and, you know, yeah, prepared. All right. Okay. Sign us off. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Um, if you like this and if you like Jade singing, you should follow us on Instagram at your poor dad pod. And TikTok, Your Poor Dad Pod. And send me an email at yourpoordad at gmail.com. Rate, review, subscribe. Um, thanks. And real quick to call you guys out, you guys, not many of you have been sending those emails. So yeah. come on. We Let's hear from them. you. Don't be afraid. I think that it's more inviting when we give them a topic. because Okay, it's like, talk oh to us God. about Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, talk to us about I talk, love like, Halloween. your craziest Halloween story. Or a breakup, like talks. I want to like talk to some toxic girlies. Okay, so a toxic breakup or a crazy Halloween story. Yeah, or if you like William Shakespeare, Jay thinks that none of you guys do. Yeah, let us know. Maybe that can be the poll. Does scholars anyone like? <laughs> does anyone scholars like scholars come out here? All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. bye.